All right, so we're a few minutes over time, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everybody, to Montana Campus Compact's Recruitment and Host Site Supervisor Expectations webinar, which is kind of a mouthful, but today, basically, we're going to be talking about um, our recruitment process and our expectations for you all as host sites. Um, so to begin with, I wanted to give our office a chance to introduce themselves. Um, so my name is Maggie Hansen. I am the program specialist for VISTA um, with Montana Campus Compact. I've been working in this role since um, August of 2023. So this will be my first um, recruitment cycle, but I'm very excited to be working with you all. And I will pass things over to Kate. Hi all, I'm Kate Primer. I'm the AmeriCorps Program Specialist um, and I just started in October. So also first time with recruitment for Montana Campus Compact and I'm excited. And I'll hand it off to Callie. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Callie Foster. I am the Director of Programs with Montana Campus Compact. Um, I am not new, this is not my first recruitment cycle. I've actually been with Campus Compact since 2018 and I have been through um, at least a handful of recruitment cycles. So I'm pretty excited to be here with you all. Um, Maggie and Kate are gonna lead this, but I'm here to answer any questions um, and to just make sure that you guys are all prepared. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. All right, and our program, the AmeriCorps program manager, Adriana Van Heumann couldn't make it today, um, but she is responsible for the AmeriCorps college coach side of our program, along with Kate. Um, so to begin with, I wanted to give um, a little overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. So first of all, I wanted to give everybody a chance to introduce themselves and their programs. Um, and then we'll go over our recruitment procedure and timeline, as well as our expectations for host sites, um, give a little overview of equitable recruitment practices, some tips for local recruitment, and then we will have time for review and questions at the end. Um, I ask that you do please save your questions for the end. Feel free to throw them in the chat during the presentation, but hopefully we'll have time for everybody to unmute and ask um, at the end of our presentation. So to begin with, I would appreciate if everyone could go around and tell us their name, their position, the name of their site, whether they're recruiting for VISTA or college coach, and then identify their campus partner. And if we could just do this in um, a popcorn system, that would be awesome. And I was wondering, Lori, would you be willing to start us off? Sure. My name is Lori Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Career Services at Carroll College, and we are um, hosting a college coach, and our um, campus partner is um, the Helena Food Chair. Do you want me to popcorn it over to somebody else? Yeah, why don't we do it that way? Okay. Molly. Good morning, everyone. I am Molly Lammers. I am the Administrative Manager in the Office of Student Engagement at Montana State. Um, we are doing both a VISTA and a college coach, um, working with our off-campus student life um, office and with the City of Boston as our community partner. Um, and I'm going to send it over to Kate. I already went as part of Montana Campus Compact. Oh, I'm so sorry. I joined you're late, so that was, that was my fault. So Annette. <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette Walstead. I'm at um, Dean of Students at Carroll College, and um, we will be working with a college coach. And this is my first experience with this, so looking forward to learning. And let's see, who can I go to? Um, how about Randy? Hello, everybody. My name is... Randy Bear don't walk. I'm the native. Hey, if anybody assistant. can hear me on this call, I just received an email. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Um, hold on. Should I keep going? Sure, Randy. Yeah, why don't you? Do <laughs> All right, I'm Randy Bear don't walk. I'm the native success coordinator at MSUB with the Native American Achievement Center. Um, nice to meet everybody. First time here. Ms. Sunny, would you like to go next? Yeah, I could go next. Um, 
Hi everyone, my name is Sunny Rilbert. I'm the Director of American Indian Outreach here at MSU Billings and we are recruiting for Avista and our campus partners is New Student Services and then along with the, um, the local tribal colleges. You wanna pick somebody to introduce themselves next? Um, let me see. Who did I not? Um, Stacy, did you go? Hi there. Um, I'm Stacy Olary. I'm I I'm the associate director of career success in experiential learning and career success. Is that all we're saying? I'm sorry, I just joined a little late. Yeah, um, I also was wondering whether um, you're recruiting for a best or college coach and your campus partner. Um, we are recruiting for college coaches, part-time college coaches. And campus partner, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Sorry. All right, and Andrea, would you like to go next? Sure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Vernon. I'm also at the University of Montana. And today I'm on the call with regard to the college coach position um, that we're applying for through our vice provost office for student success. Um, so that's, I think, the campus partner, um, since that's the campus host. <laughs> Thanks. And Anna, would you like to go next? Sure. I'm Anna Edwards, and I'm from Bozeman School District. Um, and we are recruiting for an AmeriCorps VISTA, and our campus um, partner is Montana State University. Awesome. And Deneen, are you able to go? Yes. Hi, I'm Deneen Peterson at Dawson Community College, and um, we are recruiting for a college coach here on our campus. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're actually, I guess, the campus partner, but then within um, our campus, um, it's to work with our student success department and specifically with our Dawson Promise program. Awesome. Um, Sarah? Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Stans. I am Community Resilience Director at Park County Environmental Council, which is also our site here in Park County. And we are continuing with our VISTA for a second year and our campus partners, um, Montana State University Extension Office. Yeah, thank you. Natalia? Hi, I'm Natalia. I'm the Youth Program Coordinator at Soft Landing Missoula. Uh, we're recruiting for a college coach, and our campus partner is the Davidson Honors College at University of Montana. Thank you. Um, how about Mike? Have you gone yet? Um, I have not. Sorry, I'm getting set up still. Um, my name is Michael Sard. I work with Home Resource. I'm the program director here, um, and we are recruiting for uh, Vista. Um, this will be our first uh, year in a while, at least, doing it here. All right, great. Thank you. And Josh, you're with Home Resource as well, correct? I am. That's right. And our campus partner is uh, Missoula College. All right. Wonderful. Did I miss everybody? Has everybody gone? Okay, great. Well, I will hand things over to Kate to go over our recruitment procedure. So our recruitment procedure um, kind of breaks down into, the, into these seven steps. Um, so it all starts with applications um, that we open on our end through the My AmeriCorps portal. Um, so all of our applicants have to go through the My AmeriCorps portal, um, but we'll also post on a whole bunch of other uh, websites and places. So we'll be opening the eGrants, hopefully. Um, we'll have those all open by next week. Um, and then our office will also be posting on our website, on the Montana Campus Compact Handshake, on the National AmeriCorps Handshake, on LinkedIn, Service Year, and the Peace Corps Job Board. Um, so once we get those all up, those are our main um, online focuses for job boards, postings, things like that. Um, and as we receive applicants through the My AmeriCorps portal, our office um, will be going through those and sending, um, 
we'll be sending the qualified candidates the application supplement for them to complete, and then we'll be scheduling interviews, intake interviews with our office. Um, so once we have an interview scheduled, we're on to step three, and we'll conduct, conduct a standard intake interview um, with those candidates. We'll take notes, um, and then we'll send, based on those interviews and applicants' preferences, we'll start matching those qualified candidates with the host sites. Um, so we'll start sending applicants to you all as host sites. You'll get a matching email. Um, and in that matching email, you'll receive uh, those AmeriCorps applications through eGrants, as well as their two references that come with that, all the notes from our intake interview that our office did, and their application supplement. Um, in that matching email, host sites will also have a link to a submittable page. Um, that has the candidate acceptance form. So after you get a matching email, you'll have uh, a set window. It's typically 10 days, but depending on where we're at in the recruitment, that might um, be extended or go down to a shorter time period for host sites to set up an interview with those candidates. Um, that interview is all up to you. It can be as informal or as formal as you would like it to be. Um, and after you've completed that uh, interview, you'll have to complete the candidate acceptance form on submittable, which either uh, accepts or rejects that candidate for your site. Um, and we'll also be reaching out to the candidate and they'll need to accept on their end that match that we created. Um, and if everybody accepts on both ends, we'll go into the onboarding and enrollment process from our office. Um, so kind of a lot of steps, lots of back and forth, um, but that's, the general flow of how recruitment goes from our end. Um, if there's a local candidate, it's a little bit different. Um, and we do want to prioritize local recruitment this year. Um, so if you guys are finding candidates on your campus, we're going to prioritize them over any candidates that we're getting through the AmeriCorps portal for first. So if you guys identify a local candidate that you've matched with that you think would be a great fit for your program, uh, you guys just need to send us that information for that candidate. Make sure that our office is aware of that. And it can be as simple as like a name and an email address. Um, but those local candidates do still need to go through that AmeriCorps portal to apply. Um, so make sure that you're directing them to that. Or we can as well if you send us the emails. Um, but we'll still be conducting that basic intake interview from our office end. And that's where it kind of goes back to the standard flow. Um, where we'll conduct that intake interview. We'll still send that matching uh, email back to the sites, even though you guys identified the candidate first, um, we'll still be kind of just going through the process, making sure that we're checking all the boxes, that it's still a good fit. Um, so you'll still be filling out, uh, setting up another interview with that candidate, filling out that candidate acceptance form, um, and then making sure that everybody accepts that on both ends. All right, so here's a very basic timeline of our recruitment procedure. So March is when applications will open on all those platforms that Kate mentioned, and we will continue adding details as sites confirm them. Um, April through May is when we see the bulk of our applications put through and when most of placements are made. June 28th is the application for our VISTA positions, and a month later on July 28th is the application deadline for AmeriCorps college coach positions. August 12th is the start date for VISTA positions, and September 3rd is the start date for AmeriCorps college positions. Uh, our host site expectations are that the host site supervisors understand and follow uh, Montana Campus Compact's recruitment strategy to streamline the process and guarantee all qualified candidates receive proper consideration. Uh, each host site will be responsible for advertising their VISTA or AmeriCorps position through their own network. So uh, making sure that you're seeking out those strong applicants from your local community uh, to assist with recruitment, to advertise in unique ways, which we'll touch on a little more later. Um, each host site, site supervisor or the equivalent um, will be available to meet with applicants throughout the recruitment process. Um, so it's really important once we send those matching uh, candidates to your host sites that somebody is finding that time within that 10 days to meet with them, to interview them, to see if they're a good fit or not. Um, applicants are likely applying to many other sites and could be offered another position. Um, so reaching out to candidates as soon as possible and keeping our office aware of your selection process is going to be key through all of this. 
Um, the equitable and lawful recruitment practices, we're just going to touch on. Um, AmeriCorps recruitment and selection activities are held to the same non-discrimination standards as are applied to other hiring situations. Um, so unfair treatment because of race, color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, gender identity, and sexual orientation, national origin, age, disability, or genetic information are all prohibited. Um, and when you're evaluating candidates, uh, all judgments should be based on the knowledge, skills, and abilities required and clearly communicated to successfully pre perform the position duties. Um, so examples of characteristics that would not disqualify a candidate for a role um, are if they have a disability for which a reasonable accommodation can be provided, they engage in religious practices or hold religious beliefs different than or are com than are commonly found at your organization, uh, their English dialect or vernacular is different than commonly used at your organization, um, if they're older or younger than you expect an AmeriCorps member to be. Um, so it's good to ask yourself uh, more than is this person the right fit? Ask yourself, uh, what is the goal of this project? What actions need to occur to, to achieve that goal? What does a person truly need to know to be able to accomplish these actions? Are there alternative ways to accomplish this that I didn't initially think of? And does this candidate have the qualification to accomplish these actions and achieve this goal? So based on previous uh, years of recruitment, we've kind of put together some things that we do know about applicants. Um, as Kate mentioned, candidates when applying through the AmeriCorps portal typically are applying to quite a few AmeriCorps, pl pl AmeriCorps placements and they make these decisions quickly. So fast turnaround does equal retention. As Kate mentioned, it's important to just be very communicative with members, with ac applicants through the process to make sure we can funnel them into enrollment as quickly as possible. Most applications will occur midweek. It is important to tailor local communications around this timeline. Keep your eye on your inboxes for those matching announcements with this knowledge in mind. Um, geographic representation shifts over time. In our current cohort, we have really high concentrations from Montana, Iowa, and the Northeast. Previous years have seen a lot of South Carolinian members, a lot of members from Texas and California. It kind of varies, but we are using this knowledge to target our advertisements um, most effectively. So demographically speaking, a little over half of our applications come from individuals aged 21 through 24. These are typically recent college graduates or college students seeking a gap year. About a quarter come from individuals age 30 to 60, and 15% come from individuals older than 60 or in their mid to late 20s. While it is not common to have an older AmeriCorps member, it is not something that we have not seen. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're picturing who you might end up with as your member. About half of our applicants identify as white and a quarter identify with a racial or ethnic background other than white. 75% of applicants have a bachelor's degree and 15% have a master's degree. Um, a lot of times our members will move on to grad school after their service term as well. Um, I'm going to take some time to talk about Gen Z um, because they will compose 27% of the workforce by 2025. And they also happen to be the age demographic that is most likely to apply for AmeriCorps positions. Um, so Gen Z has an extreme interest in building authentic relationships. This means having conversations that are less formal and more give and take than traditional interviews. Um, they also have a deep interest in values. So make sure that you know what your organization values um, and how you clearly convey that. Social causes and employers acknowledging and supporting social causes are very important to them. Um, and uh, Maggie and I both uh, watched a Handshake webinar that kind of talked about Gen Z in the workplace. So I just have a couple um, of their focuses that we pulled from that. Um, Gen Z is very focused on uh, sustainable work-life balance, doing work that they're passionate about, developing advanced skills in their field, making a positive social impact, and developing a wide range of skills. Um, and I think all of those are uh, focuses that each of your individual organizations can really focus on and pull differently from um, during this process. I forgot I had the slide too. Um, applicants respond really well to personal attention, clear and confident description of duties, clear connection of a role to a social benefit and career development. So a note on neurodiversity is just our way of um, letting you know that we have had neurodivergent members in the past. They've been just as capable as other members, but um, it typically does come with a different skill set and a different measures of support required to allow them to succeed. 
Neurodiverse is an umbrella term covering many conditions from autism to ADHD, to dyslexia, to stuttering, to Tourette's and more. Historically, neurodiverse individuals have been intentionally and unintentionally excluded from the workforce. However, neurodiverse individuals bring great strength to the workplace when they are allowed to succeed. Um, just a reminder that disclosure is a personal choice. Nobody is allowed to, nobody is required to tell you if they are neurodivergent. Supporting neurodiverse people in the workplace is as easy as remaining non-judgmental, asking them what they need, learning about their interests, and creating a structured environment where they are comfortable. Strengths of neurodiverse people are include, but are not limited to, pattern and trend recognition, holistic thinking and problem solving, creativity, proactivity, and authenticity, and the ability to become subject matter experts. These strengths are good to keep in mind, especially for organizations that require service projects such as data collection or research or organization. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about local recruitment. Um, as Kate mentioned, our office will be recruiting nationally through a variety of methods, but to be completely transparent, for the past couple of years, recruitment has been a challenge for AmeriCorps programs all over the nation. For this reason, we ask our sites to look within their communities for potential candidates. This has the added benefits of um, finding somebody who probably will not need to relocate, likely already has housing um, and knowledge of the community that they will be serving in. Um, additionally, it gives you the chance to meet potential candidates in person before um, having them join your team, which can help with potential compatibility issues. Actions uh, that we'd love to see you all take. Um, are listing your position on your organization's job opening page, uh, announce the position in your newsletter, sh uh, directly share the position with your staff, board members, and volunteers, and ask them to share it, and identify clients, students, and volunteers that might be suited for the role and personally invite them to apply, as well as sharing the position details on social media. So we would like to support you as much as possible in your local recruitment air, um, efforts. And this includes sending all of our host sites, one large poster, five flyers, and 10 trifold brochures each. Um, you'll also be sent these print materials as digital copies, should you wish to print more. Um, we do encourage you to create your own advertising materials that can speak more specifically to your site and your AmeriCorps project. For this reason, we'll be sending over our logo, our logo and the AmeriCorps logo as a PNG to be incorporated into any designs you may make. We'll also be sending out a recruitment checklist that has some tips for postings of social media, as well as some suggestions for where to post printed materials. Here's a preview of what we'll be sending. Um, on the far right is our... Um, flyer, in the middle is the poster, and on the left is our brochure. So just to review what we've talked about today, it is important to conduct informational interviews with candidates in a timely man manner. As we said, uh, fast turnaround equals higher retention. Um, we encourage you to share the position broadly in your network and community to ensure your chances of getting a successful AmeriCorps member as soon as possible. We ask that you avoid discrimination by focusing on position, position qualifications rather than candidate characteristics when making decisions. And we encourage you to create a welcoming environment that sets candidates up for success, no matter their background. All right, and now we have time for some questions. Anybody has any? Maggie, we got one earlier, um, which I answered in the chat, um, but uh, the question was, what is the time frame for intake interviews, et cetera? Um, Lori, was I able to answer your question or would you like us to elaborate? No, you did. I should have waited for the next slide. So thank you. No worries. All right. Are there any other questions? Feel free to just unmute. I have a question. This is Sunny. I was just kind of curious. Um, I would like to recruit locally, but do you have any recommendations on um, other places that did that and how did they do that? Allie, would you like to speak on this? Sure. Um, so Sunny, what we've seen as like the most successful avenue for local recruitment is 
you know, to kind of look within your network. So, um, you know, potentially advertising it um, at US at MSUB as like a postgraduate opportunity on campus um, is a good way to, to do that. Um, if you have, you know, kind of like an internal job board um, at MSUB, it might be good to advertise it there. We've done that here at UM. Um, if the center has, um, you know, reoccurring volunteers, um, we've seen sites kind of tap into their volunteer networks. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. I know um, currently right now, we just had a member start at, um, I think it was, Dawson Community College. Yeah. And Deneen, you kind of worked with um, someone who was already on campus who had the time and availability um, to serve. Deneen, do you want to kind of talk to that? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to just share. So I actually shared it at our staff meeting um, prior to the semester. So actually during our, what is that called? Um, I don't know, before the semester starts, kind of the training you go through. Um, in service. So I was just giving an update about our program and I said, hey, we have this position. We're trying to, we've been trying to fill it. And we actually, so I wanted to share it because again, so locally, like I I know so many people in our local community, but then if I tell our 40 other staff members, they know that you know, just kind of the trickle effect, it multiplies. And it turned out that actually one, um, an, an assistant coach who was new to DCC, um, felt like he would be a great fit and wanted to to serve in this role. And so we were able to actually get him on board really quickly. So yeah, if you have a way to share, um, maybe your maybe your supervisor or someone like that can kind of take it up the chain to then disseminate it out to even just all your staff members. Okay. And then one more question. What is um, kind of like the time frame? So say we found someone that's interested is it pretty easy to kind of get them into the system and apply or because I've never seen it on like the VISTAs side. So I was just kind of curious what that process was. Yeah, um, you know, there are there are some moving pieces, you know, there is the AmeriCorps application that applicants and candidates would have to fill out as part of onboarding, especially if you find a local recruit. National recruitment, typically we're finding them through that AmeriCorps system. So the application is already done. So I'd say that can usually, you know, take a bit of time. There are references that need to be completed within that application, which is usually the biggest hang up. So if references are not a hang up, typically um, it could take, you know, just a day or so um, to get the application in. And then usually with local recruitment, we try to keep that ball rolling with communication between you and the member and us. And so we're going to put them through. Maggie, I don't know if you want to go back to the slides of local recruitment of kind of like the flow of it, um, but it does follow our kind of general recruitment process with just maybe a couple steps taken out um, because you've already gotten to know them and you can do your interview with them before we do our intake interview. These things can kind of happen um, a little off, you know, of the normal structure. Kate or Maggie, do you want to add anything to that? And and Sunny, I'd say roughly for a VISTA, um, enrollment can happen pretty quickly because they do not have to go through the same um, criminal history background check process that college coaches have to go to. Um, VISTA will uh, coordinate that directly with the member, whereas for college coaches, we are responsible for conducting that with the member. So for VISTAs, we could get someone, you know, through the process pretty quickly. I'd say 10 days, two weeks um, could be a pretty quick turnaround. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Does anyone have any other questions? A quick question here too. Are these similar processes for the part-time college coaches as well, or is that a little different process? I imagine it'd be a little different, Andrea. Um, typically, I we're hoping for more local recruitment for the part-time college coaches because typically 
we we want them to be college students that are here that potentially have you know a work study award assigned to them as well um, it's a little bit of a different process i think this one is much more focused on you know the 11 month or 12 month service term full time um so i think we might have we might have to chat with you separately for more of the recruitment for part-time um, college coaches. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else have any questions? I guess, um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a quick question. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for local recruitment, do you all provide any like language that we should be sure to include in our like job postings that we post locally or flyers to help applicants understand AmeriCorps and how this position connects with service. Um, yeah, I mean, like standard language we can insert. I, I'd <laughs> say ones that stick out to me are definitely saying service um, versus like work or job um, instead of using terms like paycheck um, or pay, we use things like living allowance, living stipend. Um, so there, yes, there is some AmeriCorps jargon that you'll, you'll want to use. So it, you know, can portray the, dis the unique situation of an AmeriCorps, uh, member. Um, education award is kind of a big buzzword, um, that we throw out. It might be useful if you're doing your own recruitment to, when you say education award, maybe put a disclaimer of, you know, this is kind of equivalent to a scholarship that you can use for, um, you know, current cost of tuition or paying off student loans. Because I think there is a little bit of confusion with that of exactly what is an education award? Am I just going to receive it as cash or does it come in up some other sort of way, which it does. It, it's a government trust um, uh, that's kept under their name for seven years. We will also be drafting position descriptions for all of our sites, too. So if you'd like to refer to that to get a hold of like what exactly the duties are listed as and what language is used, um, that could be a helpful resource as well. Will there be changes to the term for the upcoming year in terms of the I know that there was maybe some talk of changing the term time to 11 months instead of 10 months and the distribution of the living allowance. And I know that the education award changes with the Pell Grant every year. So I'm just curious what kind of changes might be happening. It does. Yeah, you're right. Um, so based off of um, kind of evaluating our current um, cohort, we have decided that for 2024, 2025, college coaches will serve an 11 month term. Um, the education award has gone up. Um, we are pending approval from AmeriCorps, um, so I can't confirm that what the exact um, amount for living allowance will be, but I think um, pending approval, it's going to be about $19,100, um, so $1,100 more than um, our current cohort. Um, was there another one that you had mentioned? Oh, the Ed Award. It does increase every year, so um, on that poster that you see, the $7,000, it is actually higher than $7,000. I'm not sure of the exact amount, but you're right. It does increase every year based on the uh, maximum amount that a student could receive for the Pell Grant. And is the, are, is the number of hours going to be the same spread out between 11 months? Yeah, so, the, so uh, all college of it. coaches are required to complete um, 1,700 hours at a minimum. We do like to cushion it a little bit by like 15 to 20 hours in case we are audited um, to ensure that they did reach 1,700 hours. Um, so yes, it will be 11 months, um, but 1,700 hours will stay the same. So a lower weekly expectation than current. Yeah, because we're trying to account for also like members, you know, deserve to take some time off, um, you know, that sort of thing for holidays and whatnot. So we are trying to make it, um, you know, make it more attainable. Yeah, because um, this year it was a bit of a, it's a bit of a stretch and we recognize that. Um, and I will say that these, this response is 
just for college coaches, not for VISTAs. VISTAs serve for a full 365 days. Um, they do not have the hour requirement. Um, there are different expectations. If you have any questions about that, if I'm causing any confusion um, and you wanna like confirm either, you know, you can ask a question now or reach out to me in the future. Maggie and Kate are also great resources um, to answer your questions as well. I did also just look up the education award for full-time members for next year, and it is $7,395. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Okay, well, I put my email along with Kate's on this slide. Feel free to reach out with anything that may come to you after the webinar. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. It is very nice to meet all of you and put names to faces. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I also put my email in the chat if anyone would like to reach out to me. But thank you all for coming.